Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so firstly, may the Lord Jesus Christ uh, reign over the universe forever and ever. And second is, in this video, I'm going to show you how to prove that the limit is n goes to infinity of uh, the quotient x to the n over n factorial for x in the positive reals is equal to zero. And we're going to do this using the squeeze theorem. And as such, this is a bonus example on the squeeze theorem, so an eighth example. And I also say that this is an important example because we use this limit uh, in multiple videos in Calculus 2, uh, specifically when we talk about the Lagrange error bound in the context of showing that functions converge to their Maclaurin series. Um, yeah, so this is an important limit. All right, so how do we show that this is true? Well. Since we're using the squeeze theorem, we need to figure out how to squeeze this guy. On the left, we squeeze him by zero. So that's to say that zero is less than x to the n over n factorial uh, for any x and any n, right? And on the right side, this is how we do it. We'll show that this here is lesser or equal to uh, x to the n over m to the n times, times m to the m over m minus 1 factorial and this here is less or equal to that there when uh, m is greater than x and in turn n is greater or equal to m yeah okay so we'll show that this here is less or equal to that there with this qualifier so why is that true well, first, let's write it over here. So we have x to the n is, or x to the n over n factorial is less or equal to, we said, x to the n over m to the n, and then times uh, m to the m over m minus 1 factorial. Okay, and the qualifier again is n is greater or equal to m, and n and m are both in turn bigger than x. All right, so first is, um, let's consider the situation when n and m are equal. Well, if n is equal to m, right? If n is equal to m, then this left-hand side can be written as x to the m over m factorial. And we'll have that it's less or equal to x to the m, remember m and n are equal in this situation, uh, times m to the m over m minus 1 factorial. And then clearly, I can cancel here and here. And what we're comparing is x to the m over m factorial and x to the m over m minus 1 factorial. Well, then the numerators x to the m and x to the m are the same. And therefore, whichever has the bigger denominator is smaller. And clearly, m factorial is bigger than m minus 1 factorial. And as this quotient, then we'll have the bigger denominator. As compared to this quotient, uh, we see that this here is going to be smaller than that there. Yeah? OK, cool. So that's when uh, m and n are equal. OK? But the other situation is that n is strictly bigger than m. Now, since n and m are both integers, they are at least one apart, if this is true, right? Um, and of course, they could be like two apart, three apart, blah, blah, blah. And however apart they are, n and m, the integer distance between them, let's call that a. That's to say that, uh, let's claim that whenever n is uh, bigger than m, uh, that n is equal to m plus a, where a is clearly some positive integer, right? Okay, then we look at this quotient again. So we'll have x to the um, n, which is m plus a, right, over um, n is m plus a factorial, right? Uh, we'll have that this is lesser or equal to, we'll have x to the m plus a over m times, well, no, m times uh, itself uh, m plus a times which is m to the n which is m to the um, m to the n is m to the m plus a right okay 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 sorry I didn't mean to confuse you I just wanted to make up for a misspeaking and took it too far perhaps um, okay and then uh, right 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 okay cool now what happens well using exponent rules we can cancel here and 
here and just write an m to the a here right um and a one there right okay cool and then like you know like we're taking up space for no reason so let's write um m minus one factorial now as before as before meaning um just like this situation once these guys are gone right just like this situation we have the numerator is the same here so just like we did over there what we have to do is decide which of these two is bigger so is this bigger than that or the other way around and whichever is bigger will uh, decide whether or not this inequality is true and of course if this inequality is true we need we need to have that this is bigger than that well it in fact is because um what would m um what would m plus a factorial be? What well, would be m plus a times m plus a minus one? And at some point in this multiplication, we'll have uh, m plus a minus a, and therefore m. And so dot 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 times m, and then times m minus one times m minus two, blah blah blah. So that. So this here is equal to that. But what is m to the a? times m minus one factorial. Well, we'll have the m minus one factorial here, but the m to the a means m times another m to its left, and then times another m and so on. Now you can do this with numbers, but you'll see that if you compared m to the a times m minus one factorial to uh, m plus a factorial, there are, uh, in the product here, there are one. There is one more number in the product here than there is in this product. So that alone is uh, sufficient for us to say that this denominator here, this guy, is bigger than this. But uh, we'll do a little bit better, which is like, even if we gave this guy an extra m that it doesn't have, when we compare uh, what's in a product, these guys are bigger all the way up to here. These guys are bigger. Although this M isn't even there, even if we did just throw an M factor in, in this part, which by the way is M to the A times M minus one factorial. First, as I said, there is in this product, M to the A times M minus one factorial, uh, there's one number uh, fewer than the number of numbers in a product here. <laughs> okay, okay, that was kind of hard to articulate. Anyway, 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 you get it, you get it. So even if we threw this extra M that's not here in this part, uh, we'll have that this guy's bigger than him, right? And this guy's bigger, this guy's bigger than that, and so on. So it's obvious that um, this denominator is bigger than that denominator. The numerators are the same, and therefore this inequality holds true. How nice, because if that's true, then we knew that the bulk of the video is going to be about showing that that's true, right? But yeah, now that we've showed that it's true, right? All we have left to do is take lim, right? So we go lim as n goes to infinity of zero is less than lim as n goes to infinity of our desired limit x to the n over n factorial is less or equal to uh, lim as n goes to infinity of x to the n over m to the n times m to the m over m minus 1 factorial. Now, as n goes to infinity, this here is going to go to 0, right? Now, why? Because we said that m is bigger than x. So, if m is bigger than x, then x over m o to the n power is going to go to zero as um, n goes to infinity because this here right is less than one if um, m is bigger than x right when m is bigger than x this quotient is less than one um, and I didn't write less than one it's less than one and so we'll have that to the n as n goes to infinity is going to go to zero and since we fixed m from the start it's just some cutoff number uh, that's bigger than x since we fixed it this here is just some fixed number So we'll, in this limit we'll have zero times some fixed number and so this limit is zero uh, And so we'll have zero is less or equal to our desired limit lim uh, Lim as n goes to infinity x to the n over n factorial 
is less than clearly this is zero and therefore by the squeeze theorem our desired limit is equal to zero um as claimed yeah okay cool all right i hope you enjoyed this and keep watching take care